taken down under the cover of darkness. Boards were erected around the monument, which was then covered up. Eight meters tall, the pillar of shame depicts 50 torn and twisted bodies piled on top of each other. It symbolized lives lost during the military crackdown on pro-democracy protesters in Beijing's Tiananmen Square on June 4, 1989. But since October, it had become an issue of dispute, the university demanding it be taken down. In a statement, they said, the decision on the aged statue was based on external legal advice and risk assessment for the best interest of the university. They added, the university is also very concerned about the potential safety issues resulting from the fragile statue. And just like that, it was taken away and put in storage. The Hong Kong Alliance is gone. The Hong Kong University Students Union is also gone. And today, even the pillar of shame is gone. Maybe they just want to erase our memories of the 1989 Tiananmen crackdown. So we must preserve this memory and fight against forgetting. In previous years, students gathered on June 4th to remember the events in Tiananmen Square. But authorities have now banned them, citing concerns about the COVID-19 pandemic. Clearly what the Communist Party wants to impose here is a kind of amnesia uh, about what happened in China uh, more than 30 years ago. The move follows a controversial national security law in Hong Kong last year that outlaws secession, subversion, terrorism and foreign collusion to intervene in the city's affairs. It sparked protests and criticism of Beijing for curtailing freedoms that were promised to Hong Kong when it was handed back to China by Britain in 1997. For now, there is an empty space where the monument once stood. But for many, even though the pillar of shame has been removed, the memory of what took place cannot be erased. Asad Beg, Al Jazeera. OK, let's bring in Jens Golschert, who is the sculptor of the Pillar of Shame and joins us from Denmark. Thanks for being on the News Hour, Jens. Before we get to your reaction on the destruction of the statue, I'd really like you to talk us through the significance of this work for you and what you were trying to convey when you were creating it. Yes, I created for about 25 years ago uh, to make a memory about something the government don't want to memory. And uh, then I put it in Hong Kong together with the Chinese democracy movement. And then uh, just before China, China took over in Hong Kong. And this was the only possibility to get a monument about the Tiananmen crackdown in 89 inside China. So, so China take over in Hong Kong and take Hong Kong uh, into the country and the pillar of shame. So uh, since then, uh, Hong Kong, mainland China has been really angry on the monument and trying to get uh, rid of, uh, of this. So uh, this is a 50 uh, bodies who are, uh, this is a death monument. This is a monument about the death uh, and what happened in the, in, in the Tiananmen in 1989. Mm. Jens, this sculpture belongs to you personally and it was loaned to the university. So what do you make of its removal and potential destruction? This is a really strange case and I think it's a kind of attack against fairness because I offer them for two months, three months, I have offered them to, with my lawyer and offered them in a lot of letters and with, in a lot of press. And we are saying we will go down to take it down and um, keep it away and put it back to Europe uh, without problem. And then uh, here in the middle of nowhere, two days before Christmas, in the darkness, they uh, make a lot of, uh, there was 50 guards around it uh, and a lot of construction workers. And I think this is not really not fair to do this kind of thing. This is a uh, uh, catastrophe. This is a brutal way to do that. You, you are, are you concerned about the damage to the sculpture as well? Yes, I have to take a look on all the video I have seen, and I can see a, a, a big part of the sculpture is still intact in some way. I can see the, uh, the, the single part of the sculpture, but I'm quite sure this is not able to do, uh, to take it down on this way to do that uh, without damage. So, of course, there is a lot of damage on the sculpture. And this is a problem because it's my property, uh, uh, private property. And I, there is some rule about that. So I think the uh, Hong Kong University had made a crime. We take it down, uh, uh, the private property of a foreign artist. 
So I think they have a big problem with doing that. Yeah, and so the university says the decision was based on external legal advice and risk assessment. Do you not see those as valid reasons for its removal? I think they, they have... As they have broken the system, excuse, this is not secure to have this culture. But it's not right. We have uh, technical uh, uh, people who have taken a look at that. I have been there for, for eight years ago to repair it. So there's no problem at all. And, and uh, we have a permission to stay there. And now they come to say, OK, you have a permission to stay there, but we have been there for 25 years. Uh, they have they have uh, making a ground uh, of cement and uh, uh, concrete and all this kind of thing, and now they say you have not a permission to stay there. Of course, we have a permission. So this this case and this they will do. They will making attack against the democracy movement, against freedom of expression in Hong Kong. This is what it is about. They will say you was not allowed to say nothing. Uh, like the Communist Party in China is against. Don't say nothing about the Jinping. Don't say nothing about Xinjiang. Don't say nothing about the Muslims uh, part uh, uh, of China. So this is the reason to do that, I think. Well, it will be interesting to see how this story unfolds in the coming weeks and months. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us on this news hour. Jens Golshiot, the sculptor of the Pillar of Shame. Thank you. Thank you.